Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode two of the Intro to GD Script for Absolute Beginners. Uh, in our last episode, we created our first project, Node and Script. And in this episode, we're going to be going into what are variables, what are functions, uh, the basic types of variables that you're going to see, and also the ready function, which is a specific type of function that is very important to Godot. Now, uh, I went ahead and renamed this game here because we made a project called Project Files, right? Uh, and so this was called Project Files, which isn't super awesome. So I clicked the rename button here, and then I just typed my awesome game and then clicked rename. So that's how you might do that uh, in your game if you so choose. I'll go ahead and click into this and you can see when we do that it's just empty we don't see the scenes we made and you're like where the heck are they they are right down here this is the file system tab and down here you can see the res folder right here and this contains all of the game information that we have saved here you can see our level one scene that we saved in this folder in our main character scene that we saved right there and you can open these up uh, and then get into them so that's really handy to do right there now, something else you might want to do uh, is go into Project, Project Settings, Run, and then choose a main scene. And what this will do is that when you open your editor, it will load the scene by default. And also, when you run the game, it will run that scene by default. So we'll go ahead and uh, open up the level one scene right here. You can click uh, these tabs around to move them, like I just did, if you so choose. Um, and then, so. If you press this play button right here, it'll run the main scene, so it'll run level one. But if we want to only run this scene, we hit Command R. So we're going to be doing that. Uh, so that's important. I'll remind you of that shortcut, but it's Command R. Okay. So we'll go into our script here. You can see I haven't changed much. Uh, you can see by default it's telling us here we can declare our variables. Here we can declare our functions, and it says right here uh, called when the node enters the scene tree for the first time. So what does that mean? Called. Uh, is called basically means run or executed. It means that whatever this function's purpose is, whatever it's supposed to do, will happen, right? And and typically you def you uh, define what it's supposed to do right here. So where you see pass here, pass basically just tells Godot when, that when it sees this, just ignore this, like do nothing. Um, but we of course are going to tell this function to do something. Um, right here it says replace with function body. That's another way to call. Uh, what the function does is its body. Uh, again, call, I'm going to be using that term quite a bit, and you should get familiar with it, means to run that function. Now, scene tree and enters and node, right? So we said node, sprite is a node. This right here is the scene tree, and um, when you, this is the scene tree in game. So not in, the, in your editor here, but if we ran right now, then we would enter the game, and thus this function would run or be called. Uh, and the scene tree is just, again, this tree. So this is the tree root. These are branches of that tree. Um, so let's get back into here real quick. So I am actually going to go over functions first before we go into variables. Uh, again, you can think of, I actually I haven't told you this yet, but uh, variables are, uh, you can think of them as things that store information, whereas functions do things. So just like in math class, right, we have uh, x equals 1. Uh, and this is a variable x with the value 1. So x stores the value 1 inside of it. And then, of course, we can have a function, like uh, we can say f of x. And I'm sorry if you this is like bringing back bad memories. Uh, code is actually not a tremendous amount of math, or at least when it is, it's fun. right? We'll say uh, f of x is uh, x plus 1. Okay, And I capitalize this x. That's actually a good point here. I accidentally capitalized this x. And capitalization is important in code. Uh, lowercase x and capital X are not the same thing. This would not work. We had, need this to be a smaller x. So I'm putting these hashtags here because basically this is that like telling the editor like don't don't uh, read too much into anything after this. It's called a comment uh, and it's telling you to ignore. Here you can see that it's it's highlighting the colors based on what these things are. You know this is a function. Do this. This is the word func. Make sure it's red and you know, make sure it's doing something. If we put a comment, then, you know, Godot's not going to read it, not going to get mad at us if it makes no sense. Um, it, it will get mad at you if you write something down that doesn't make sense and there's no comment there. Or hashtag, I should say. So, uh, again, we have this function here, uh, f of x. And if we plug our current x, which equals 1, into this, we'll get 2, right? Because we have 1 plus, or x, which equals 1, plus 1, equals 2. Uh, really simple. If we made this 2 and then plugged it in, we'd get 3. So that would be a function. You can use this function over and over and over again, and it does a thing with the variable. So again, that's just to illustrate the point that functions are things that do things, and variables are things that store information. In this case, it's storing a number, which is 2, and specifically the type of number it's storing is called an integer. But we'll get into that more in a second. So what I'm going to do now is kind of just really tell you how functions work in Godot. And there's really three types of functions 
uh, that you need to know about. Um, there's one overarching type called a built-in function. So these are functions that come with Godot. Uh, they're already built in. They already have their definition somewhere. <clears throat> and you have types like print. So I'm going to write print here. Uh, and right there. So this is defined somewhere and we know it does something. So what print does is that anything that is within these uh, parentheses here is going to be printed out to the output right here. So if we put quotes, uh, this is a variable type, type called a string. Uh, very important that uh, you know that and we can print and we can say hello. Okay, now if I run the game, uh, I'm going to hit command R here to run the game, run just our scene here. You can see that down here in the output it says hello. If you do that, you will have officially created your first program, so congratulations. Um, most people say, hello world, I think it's overrated, it's too many words. So uh, here we're at the ready function. So again, the only reason this printed was because we say that this is a built-in function of Godot, it's a special function, uh, and I deleted the comment, but it's called right when the game starts when this enters the tree, right? So this is a little weird here because we aren't calling this function anywhere, Godot is calling it for us. Right, and we are defining it for Godot. Or print, print is the opposite. Print is defined by Godot. It, it's got some magical stuff in the in the behind scenes that you can't see that makes it so that whenever you put something in these parentheses here, it's going to print those things out to the bottom, which is cool. Now we can also make another type of function, and this is our custom functions. So you write func. So this is very important when you're defining a function, you write func, and this is one of those things that's like fundamental of Godot. Uh, usually when you're defining something or basically writing uh, what the description of that is, you write the uh, word of what it is, some kind of identifier uh, first. So in this case, we're writing a function, write func. Okay, um, then I'm gonna write, uh, uh, no, we'll, we'll say our function here is gonna be say hello, okay? You need to write the name of your function, two parentheses like this, and then a colon, and then you press enter and you see that this space, or I'm sorry, this tab is right here. And that is really important because uh, if you get rid of this tab, it wouldn't be included in your function. You need that tab and this, anything in here is your body. Now, if we go ahead and this function and we say prello, or I'm sorry, <laughs> prello, uh, print, and then I'm gonna say Godot, all right? And then we run this. Uh, we see that Godot isn't printed at the bottom. Why is that? Well, because like I said, and this is only really to illustrate the difference between this function and this function, is that this is a, uh, a Godot special function that is called by Godot. Nothing is calling say hello. We're calling print, but not say hello. So if we want this to run, we have to put this somewhere where it is going to be called by Godot, for instance, in the ready function. So here, we'll then say, say hello. Okay, and you can see just like the print function, uh, it, it is a, you know, a special color, it's got the parentheses. We don't, this is called an argument, we're gonna get into that later, but as you can see, we don't need anything in our parentheses because uh, when I, in the definition here, I didn't put anything in the parentheses. And now if I run it, uh, now it's gonna say hello Godot because it's calling that, right? And you can see that it also wrote hello and then Godot because in code it reads from top to bottom. That's also really important. It reads from top to bottom. So it reads line one all the way down, seven, eight, the nine, eight says print this, nine says print this. Okay, that's how that goes. So that's the basics of functions. We're gonna be getting a lot more into that later, but it's really important that you know how the ready function works. So that way it can illustrate some really important points now with variables. So. If we go here, like I said, the comment, what that does is it tells Godot not to really think too much about anything on this side of it. Uh, well, if we go ahead and delete that there. Um, the reason that's important is because now it's gonna say there's an error. It's gonna say unexpected token identifier X. It's not gonna let you run the scene because, uh, well, you've made an error. We need to fix that error. So just like a function, you write func, a variable, you write var. It's highlighted in red. Again, I said this is a pretty important fundamental thing. Here, now we're saying var, the variable is X, the value is two. I'm actually gonna change this back to one. Uh, okay, just like that. And this is a type of value which is called an integer. So just like in math, right, an integer is a whole number and just it's the same thing in code and we also call this an int for short. Now, there's another type of number uh, value which is a uh, float. So here I'm just typing 1.0 and this is a float. Uh, let's do this. Net. Okay. So this is important. They are very important in code. If you try to mix these together, you might get some unexpected results. It's fine to do so, but um, you need to know how they work in order to use them together because you might get some unexpected results. Floats are more precise, but it's harder to say, uh, you know, compare them and do stuff like that. We'll get into what that means later, but I'll show you a little example right now. 
So if we go print, right, we can, this is, this is called the next data type, which is called a string, which I'll get into, but you can also print uh, addition. So we can say print X and it's not going, well, actually here, guess what's going to print down to the console when I print, when I run this. Okay. It prints one, right? If you guess that, that's great. It's not going to print X. It's going to print the value of X, which is one. Now, if we put this in quotes here like that, and then ran this, you can see that it's going to print X, right? Because it's in quotes. Um, but if we just put X, it's going to uh, uh, print the value of that number. Now, if we divide X by two, right? That's one divided by two. The answer of that, of course, is 0.5, right? Or one half. Um, now, if we run this, you'll see that we get zero, right? That's weird, right? And that is because we're dealing with integers. These are whole numbers. When you're dealing with only integers, the Godot engine and any kind of programming language is only going to spit out back to you integers. So it has to give us a whole number. In this case, it's zero. Now, if we change either one of those to a float, so if I can change this to uh, 2.0 and then run this, you'll see that I then get 0 0.5. Uh, so that is very, very important. Um, and it's just something to keep in mind throughout uh, code. And that's really just to illustrate the difference here. Now, you might have noticed that we've been using these quotes. And so I think it's really important to, and everything's kind of interrelated in code, which is kind of why it's hard to start, right? Because in order to explain one thing, I'm using something else. Um, so here is the another, other type of variable that's really important. Uh, and we'll call a Z. And this is a string. Uh, and so here you need two quotes, uh, just like that. If you press the quote button, you can use double quotes or single quotes. Although the technical style of Godot says that you should use the double quotes like that. And anything you write in here uh, is then the string. So here we'll just again call this Godot. Uh, and this is going to be our string. So again, that is the type of value that this is. It is string. And then again, if we print Z, it is not going to print Z, but is instead going to print Godot down there at the bottom, which is fantastic, right? And so uh, again, if we put now quotes around this, now this is not the variable Z, but instead this is a string that is literally Z and it'll print Z at the bottom. Okay, that's really important. Now the last variable data type that we're going to talk about today is called the Boolean value. These are really, really important in code and we'll be getting into these, uh, I think, quite a bit actually in the next episode. Uh, and so we'll write, the, I'll just call this one A, I guess. And uh, we're going to write false. Actually, you know what? I'll write true. I'm, I'm in a good mood. But yeah, so that's the point there, right? Is that these are a on or off one or zero binary thing that says true or false. So it stores that value. It's really, really important to say, um, you know, you can check if something is true or if it is false. Um, you can check if something exists or it doesn't. <clears throat> you can use them as flags. You can say, oh, if I have already um, killed this player, then don't let me kill him again or something like that. You know, uh, if I have already jumped or if I have already double jumped, don't let me jump again because I don't want my player to be able to triple jump. I only want this guy to be able to do a double jump in my game. You don't want him to just keep jumping on to infinity. So those are some examples of where you might use those. These are called Boolean values. For short, we call them bools. Um, for integers, like I'll usually say integer out loud and you use int in code when referring to an integer. But for Booleans, most people actually just say bool. Um, to refer to a bool. So, I mean, that might be uh, helpful to know, but you know, people do both. They're both correct. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So again, uh, it can be true or it can be false. Again, uh, case is important in Godot. So we want to make sure that this is not a capital S, uh, I'm sorry, capital F, uh, because it's actually trying to correct us to the correct one there. We're getting an error and this needs to be lowercase, just like that. Uh, and here, if we print A, and then run this, you can see that actually prints the value false. Uh, ironically, with, with an uppercase F, uh, I don't quite know why it does that, but uh, it does. Now, um, I don't know how we're doing on time, but what I want to do for the very last thing is tell you about the other built-in functions in Godot that allow you to convert um, between these. So you can, they are the string function, okay? They are the int function. Uh, and then we have the float function. Okay, just like that. Now, string will take anything you put into it and convert it into a string. So if you put the number one, it will uh, end up equaling, right? So I'll put a hashtag here. It will actually equal this, right? That's that's how that that's how that happens. Okay, so that's cool to know. And int can do the exact opposite, right? So you can if you put int, right, and you put a one here, it will try and convert that from a string uh, into the number one. Right. So that's how that works. And then float 
uh, and int can both be used to convert between them. So you can put a float one in here and it will return 1.0, right? That's all good to know. Um, and I think very, very handy. So in the next episode, we'll get into actually using another type of really important function called the physics process function. It's another special function that is called by Godot for us, but we get to define it. Uh, and that is how we are going to get our player to move. So yeah, hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, the next episode, we'll get into some more cool stuff. Uh, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.